if you continue down the path of reality, it's not going to be a Trump. It's going to be somebody who is going to promise law and order. We are going to waive all sorts of rights and we are going to welcome him in with open arms. And we are going to, again, give up a tremendous amount of rights yes. to an authoritarian person who can put things down and, and does it in a manner that, you know, makes everybody feel safe again. And yet we wake up and we realize what we've lost. I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. Crime statistics, the Rittenhouse case, vigilanteism. All these are covered in part two of my discussion with Mark McYoung. Uh, again, this was all predicated on um, the question that I had for Mark as I was looking for statistics for my book. If you have not watched part one of this, you should go back and watch that because it's great. We really set it up. Now here we start talking about, you know, the idea of where we are in society right now and what are the ramifications if we continue down this path? How are people going to respond to violence? You know, what are they going to do? How are they going to communicate with each other? Um, what are the stakes? Why are things changing right now? Um, it's, it's very, very compelling stuff. So listen, I hope you enjoy part two of my interview with Mark McYoung. Please check him out. He is a prolific author. And the book that I would recommend right now is, uh, you know, What You Don't Know Can Kill You. It's one of his latest books, and it's just uh, absolutely fantastic and absolutely focuses on the subjects that we're talking about here. You want to take a deep dive, um, that's a great place to start. You know, What You Don't Know Can Kill You by Mark McYoung. All right, here we go, part two. Now, one of the things, um, you know, I like your, your thing of, you know, violence is seldom the answer, but when it is, it's the only answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're up against a huge mindset out there that has drank the Kool-Aid that violence never solves anything. Okay. Now here's what, what is going to be fun. And I give this to you as a gift. Did you know that that is an extremist and absolutist position? Uh, the, the violence never solves anything. Right. And oh, yeah. by the way, it's also wrong. Demonstrably yeah, absolutely wrong. But um, I forgot who it was. Some smart ass said, he goes, well, then you must be doing it the wrong way. <laughs> uh, no, that was not a smart. I know the guy who said that. <laughs> um, and he meant it too. Here's That's the so thing. Great. Um, it's, it's actually a philosophical trap because what they should be saying to make it accurate is, in my experience, violence has never solved anything. Yeah. That statement, I would have no heartburn whatsoever with. Yes, and good for you. Congratulations. You're living a good life, yeah. Yeah, good for, good for you. Um, the reason I say it's an absolute, uh, an extremist statement is number one in classical logic okay and yeah this is going to sound weird um the idea was if a statement was not 100 percent true it was false okay now when the person used the word never they went into absolute okay which Number one, that means never, ever before in all of history, okay? And to prove that statement, you'd actually have to build a time machine. Or first of all, you'd have to ask every person alive on the planet, have you ever used violence to resolve a, a problem? Okay. And if one person says, uh-huh. Um, Full statement's done. Yeah. Right. But then you got to build a time machine. <laughs> and ask every person who has ever lived. Okay, so this soundbite sounds reasonable, but once you know about asking every person on the planet and building a time machine, it's like, yeah, that's kind of an extremist out to lunch statement, but they believe it. Well, I think the challenge too is, and the reason I really wanted to do this is, you know, when you're talking about in the Rittenhouse case is a classic example of it is 
and, and this is where you know listen yeah my statement you know the answer and mm -hmm. when it is it's the only answer you know let's go do it guys yeah you'll go do it and you may be devoid of choice you better be devoid of choice um but it doesn't mean in, in the current environment that we're in when we see something like the rittenhauer case can you go into you know what you've always talked about you know how prosecutors if they're motivated uh they're going to find ways to manipulate things and it, literally i mean there, there's so much that's happening in that case and i'm Try, keep it completely apolitical it just makes no sense you know like, like the approach you, you can't believe it's the prosecution using these tactics to, to come in for for this unless there's an agenda and i think it's something that everybody has to be aware of because using it you know if you have to end up using it uh self-protection self-defense there's things to think about and you're very schooled on on why yeah. people do that and also, Mark, does it come from a fact that, that that's where this group thing's kind of coming from, that violence, now, these prosecutors and a lot of these people, it, it, they, they believe that wholly that assists? That is right. Oh. right. There is a major chunk. And we can talk about different sides without talking about politics. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, if you have bought into the violence never solved anything, um, but also with this uh, caveat, one of the other TED Talks, that I watched was, and I can't remember the guy's name, but he talked about the state has a monopoly on violence. Okay. And that is one, do not challenge that monopoly. Right? That is a very big thing. And a lot of people who believe violence never, you know, solved anything are very happy to have their violence done by proxy. Right. Okay. They're cool with that. It's like, Hey, I don't, you know, I won't do it, but the cops will right um you know the thing is there are so many factors in the rittenhouse case yes the judge or the uh, prosecution is pandering to the attitude of violence never solved anything okay there are people who believe it i have a little birdie who told me a woman who was dismissed during the jury selection process for admitting that she thought anybody who uh, owned an AR-15 was evil and should go be put in prison. Yes. Yeah, that's dismissed with uh, prejudice. Wow. Um, and, you know, as you have this anti-violence mindset, you also have the, you know, assault rifle issue, right? The anti-assault right. rifle. Had he shot somebody with pistols, this case probably wouldn't have gone. Right. Okay, but all these things and the question is first of all i doubt the prosecutor believes this but he is pandering to a jury who 11 of the jury members are women okay and you know he's going after that that you know he you know violence he shouldn't have had to kill this kid etc cetera, etc cetera. and where this is a problem is people grudgingly admit, well, okay, maybe if you do do violence and self-defense. Okay. And that, by the way, when you did your uh, TED talk and you were doing the choking, right? Um, you know, that those people would acknowledge, okay, well, maybe violence. Okay. If I was being choked. Okay, so they can sort of kind of understand it in the in the term very narrow definition of self defense. Okay, but they themselves have a hard time imagine doing it themselves. So you've got this huge bias against violence. Right, at least what they think is violence. Right, and that's also something else we probably want to talk about. Um, and what there's also another factor, which is unfortunately a truth of the situation is a lot of Americans have gotten to the point of they let our legal system do the do the trash taking out. Right. Okay. Um, one of the things that I ask people is, can a gang member act in self defense? And a lot of people say no. Absolutely, yeah. Well, here's 
the scenario that I paint, which is, okay, I'm a drug dealer. You're a druggie. Okay, not much. I mean, no matter, it, in this scenario, <laughs> no good guys. Um, but thing about it is, I, I got my drugs, I got my money. You know this, you want it. So you put on your little snorky mask, right? And you come in and rip me off, but you don't kill me. Okay, you're waving the gun around, et cetera. You grab all the drugs and money and split. Okay. I'm very upset about this. I want to find out who did this. Okay. I catch rumor because, you, you know, while you're out partying, you mentioned somebody that you did it. They come back and they tell me. And I decide in, you know, honor culture street, you know, manner that I'm going to even the score by killing you. So I come up and I try and shoot you, but you shoot back and you're a better shot and you shoot me. Okay. Now, was that self-defense? Yeah. I mean, that's, yes. there's, there's no question. I mean, it's not, it, it's open to everybody. That's just it. I mean, if we can't decide who gets to and who doesn't get to utilize self-defense in that isolated thing. I mean, they're both, you know, dirt bags. Well, that, is, that has nothing to do with yes. the incident. You're absolutely right. And especially because there was no proof of crime about, you know, what you did. Right. Okay. But the way the legal system has evolved over time is if the prosecutor can introduce this information that this was over a drug deal gone bad, right? Even if he's got to lie about it, he's going to convict you or get you convicted. Right. Okay. And this is a happy, happy for the rest of society. Sucks for you, but society is like, hey, two dirt bags off the street. Right. So people have been allowing the, the system to, you know, keep the streets clean, so to speak. Okay. And they've turned a blind eye to what has happened to our right of self-defense. Okay. And it has been eroded, not only because of the philosophy people have who have bought into violence, never solved anything, and you should never kill anybody and da, 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 all that crap, which the prosecutor is going to play on. But it's also a they have gotten to the point of, I mean, it's not an exaggeration to say they're out of control. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I've encountered prosecutors who believe if somebody died, there has to be a crime. Okay. And they're going to find some way to prosecute it. Okay. You, you were also talking, you know, getting into the root of the house, the, the prosecution's ability to to shape the narrative the way they wanted by keeping certain things out. And I, th I think that's very interesting because that's very relevant to a citizen, you know, a citizen that, that uses it. And this helps also reinforce, and listen, I come from a law, law enforcement family. If I get pulled over, I, I, I'm not saying a thing. I'm, you know, in, in, and it just proves why you unfortunately have to be that way. Hey, well, and I mean, okay, I did a, it's a 20, 20 episode series on dealing with the cops. Okay, I put it up on, I did it in Patreon first on my Patreon page. Then, you know, six months later, I started posting them on Facebook. Okay, and I cover factors that people don't understand. Okay, and like what it takes with, you know, both the cop building a case, right? And when, you know what, it actually is easier just to cop to it. Okay. I mean, I got a speeding ticket. You know, my wife made us late for, you know, an international flight. I'm stressed. I come flying over the hill, a damned infernal airport. Um, and there's a cop with the radar gun. I didn't even have to wait for this dude. <laughs> just <laughs> I just pulled over, had the, you know, 
glove compartment open when we pulled over. First words out of my mouth was, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> um, you know, the cop and I were talking, and it's like, yeah, I, I did it. I admit it. And he goes, look, you're doing 19 over. 20 is mandatory arrest. But I'm only going to write you up for 10. And I very sincerely said, thank you. I really appreciate that. Right? No. So, you know, I mean, first of all, if you're breaking the law, come on, man. You know, yeah, cop yeah. do it. We hate it, but you were speeding. Yeah. All the times you got away with it and you didn't get nailed. You know, it's when people try and argue, when people try and make things, you know, try and talk their way out of a ticket. Right? And I mean, I have a saying, which is not here, not now, not you. Okay. And this especially applies to being arrested. Okay. You're not going to talk your way out of being arrested. You can't, however, talk your way into being arrested. Okay. Um, and people go, oh yeah, that's why you should never talk to the cops. It's like, no, that's why you should never be an asshole to a cop. Right. right? On top of not, you know, I mean, if it's serious, but um, you know, they don't, you know, people also don't understand exactly how much the police have been turned into, um, alternative revenue. I mean, they're revenue generators and it's not the cops wanting to do it. It's the city telling the department, the boss is telling, the, you know, um, so it really gets kind of complicated, but I go into all these things on this series, but um a lot of times i mean and i'm nowhere near as funny as chris rock but his routine of how not to get your ass kicked by the police yeah is gold yeah. <laughs> you know? it is but you know when you're dealing with people with guns try not to be an asshole right but you know when you're talking, but moving on to that, when you, one of the things that I talked about is the order to arrest. You can have every cop, if you do self-defense, you can have every cop on site believing that it was self-defense and the order to arrest comes from above. Right. From somebody who isn't even on the site. Okay. And once they're told they have to arrest, they will arrest you. Okay. They'll set up the case. And, you know, this is where you run into some really sleazy stuff of where they will actually build a case for the prosecutor. Okay. And they can do some stuff that is really nasty. But then once the prosecutor gets a hold of it, He's going to do everything in his power to keep up more evidence, especially things that is exculpatory and could help your case from being introduced. Right. Now, I've actually worked on cases where this guy showed up, neighbor's house covered in blood, saying that he had been attacked. Okay. And when they took him in, they lost the shirt. Okay. Lost. Lost it. Yeah. yeah. And oh, by the way, all these bruises and cuts here. Why don't you take a shower? Let's, you know, put on some, uh, you know, medical, uh, medical cream, et cetera, AKA jailhouse camouflage. So this guy's face didn't look like he'd been beaten to shit. Right. Right. Um, the third, you know, the third thing was all the cops, everybody had been filmed on the cop's cell phones, except for him. Okay. Now, this is all before it reaches the DA. Okay. Now, the DA, um, you know, he would a lot of times what they have to dis disclose all evidence. Well, a lot of times evidence gets lost and there and what is disclosed doesn't show up until way late or parts are missing okay 
um, then you get like, hey, we have this evidence and the attorney is going to fight with all of his power to keep that from being introduced. Okay, so there's like three layers of keeping information away from the jury from hearing about it. Like this Rosenbaum guy. Okay. Um, and by the way, this is oh so tacky. It is so politically incorrect. Are you ready? I'm ready. You know how Joseph Rosenbaum died? How? The same way he lived, trying to inappropriately touch a minor. That's so true. That's so true. What, what's it, what is the idea behind that, Mark? The idea of, and I get that it doesn't, I get that a even a criminal, someone with a criminal past has the ability to, to use self-protection, but it deliberately seems like in this particular case, they've, they've taken all the criminal element out of the other side yes. that is, is so, is so crucial to the real whys of yeah. how it came down. You yeah. know, I mean, it's just interesting that, is that just a, something that, that we need to be aware of, meaning we mean normal citizens who, yes. especially yes. those of us that have the illusion that we're going to be able to use our self-protection and everything's going to be rosy. Yes, exactly. You need to know that they're going to do everything in their power to send you away. Okay. And you need to defend yourself on that level, which is way different than what you did physically. Right. Okay. But the thing where what is being done, and I mean, as I said, I hate the fact the Rittenhouse trial is happening. But if you really want to understand the dangers of the legal system, you watch that trial. I mean, it being streamed and all the stuff that, I mean, I, you know, still, professionally speaking, I can make a very strong argument for self-defense for Kyle Rittenhouse in all cases. Okay. Um, but that's also acknowledging that I don't know certain things certain things that could change that opinion, but it's like, it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. Um, I was waiting to see if there was anything that could be, you know, used that would change my mind. And everything I saw was still in line with what I think of as self-defense, but the prosecutor, even by bringing this case, right, um, was excluding all of that info, you know, so much. I knew a lot about this and I was really amazed at what he did not allow or, you know, he argued for and then got, you know, just dis like not allowed, um, which by the way is why when I tell people this guy, Binger is not an idiot. No. He is a really good attorney. The problem is he was trying to polish a turd. Yeah. Okay. And all the bad things that he did, all the, you know, people go, ha, ha, ha he's an idiot. It's like, man, you don't realize what he did. He's also, I think people forget too. He's, it's not, he's talking to multiple audiences when he does this. He, he knows probably that he's weak on the legal side. He probably knows it, but he doesn't, that's not who he's working on. You know, like a lot of those statements aren't for necessarily Yes, the court. Yeah. It's for everything that's being covered right now, how we've seen it, and then all the talking heads, how they can interpret it. Right, and also, you know, there's something that it's really squishy, but it's very real, and that is, you know, people feel that because people died, there has to be some kind of punishment. Okay. And it's sort of like, well, even if it really was self-defense, we have to convict them on something. And that's more of a mindset with the jury. Okay. And it, I mean, some people are like, yeah, self-defense, let them walk on everything. Other people are like, I'm really uncomfortable with it. But yeah, I recognize it was self-defense, but I still think I have to convict them on something. Right. And, and, and see, that's the strange thing. The strange thing is that's not necessarily done on the criminal side, meaning when, it, when it's a criminal doing it, it seems to be 
oppressive when it is a citizen with, with you know, no real background. This kid really had no background or anything. He was, you know, he, he was there and they, it, it just seems like they're really desperate to make sure something sticks. Yes. And, 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 but it also seems, there seems like it, in the last year and a half, it seems like anytime a citizen has done anything to stand out, protect themselves, they've been slapped down really hard. Yep. And the, the, the focus on the, even when you have the gaslighting of these just, just freaking awful criminals, these people that with their backgrounds who are doing this stuff, when you got a guy who's literally pointing and admits to pointing the gun at him. <laughs> you mean that moment? Yeah. He's being seen as a sympathy, uh, a sympathetic character on a lot of the, the, yeah. the cable news net networks. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. Well, again, this is the promoting, you know, you know, are we in soft totalitarianism? I mean, that is a really good question. And I mean, think of an aspect that you're, that of your life that is not in some way controlled by the government. Okay. We were talking about dogs earlier. Okay. Um, you know, you have a dog and you have, you have to have rabies shots every year. Yeah. Right now, how long do rabies shots actually last? That is something that you know you need to look in. Do you need to vaccinate a dog every year for rabies versus because you've been told and you have to have that to qualify for a license? Right. For your dog? Right. And I mean, how many aspects, you know, does you know some government agency have their fingers? in in your life okay um and i mean this gets to the point of all oh, you're just paranoid it's like no no this is getting to the point of you cannot deny it anymore yeah um and you know pol laws policies and you know are we living under an oppressive system okay and I don't care why they think they're doing it. Okay. I had a, a kid that I knew that, you know, went to college and the indoc or the, God, what is it? Um, I want to say indoctrination. That's the word in my mind. But for like the first week where they run around and show you everything and, you know, right. you yeah. attend classes, but, um, and they, you know, they all attended a sexual assault um seminar about what the school is and the kid summed it up as we know you're a rapist we're watching you and we're going to catch you if you do yeah. that was his summation of it yeah right are we i mean have you ever heard this uh seven felonies a day Oh yeah, what, what what's that in context to the the you you basically you basically because of the way the law is that every every citizen basically every day is capable of of committing seven different felonies without even knowing it. Not capable does does. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, and I mean the thing is keeping this to violence and um, you know the legal system um, domestic violence right slam dunks it's a mandatory arrest okay and by that they have removed officer discretion which is a real big problem as far as i'm concerned right because back in the old days and it was so many things back in the old days cop would show up you know the cops show up and say look you two are obviously fighting right you've been hitting each other right it is a fight consensual combat mm -hmm. um you go sleep somewhere else right and most of the time that worked okay they didn't have to arrest right it became mandatory arrest which is if there's any violence any sign of violence somebody has to go to jail right now, the original uh, mandatory arrest actually almost overwhelmed the system. Okay. Because, you know, gosh, domestic violence is always the guy beating the hell out of the woman, right? <laughs> no. 
No. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, and any study that says otherwise is not real. Yeah. And statistics show that it's always the woman who is the victim, right? Well, gee, in the original uh, thing of mandatory arrest, the arrest ratios were 54 to 46%, usually with both parties going to jail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden you've got this system overwhelmed by all these arrests. So it's like, uh, let's change this. How about we change it to primary aggressor? Okay. Now, what does primary aggressor mean? Does it mean the person who hit first? No. Does it mean the person who hit the most? No. Basically, it means whoever, quote, won the fight. Right. Okay. Now, this is disturbing when you know women hit more, but men cause more damage. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, they walk in and they go, aha, he hit her, automatic arrest, let's go. No investigation as to what happened, except to build that case. Okay. Um, you know, if they walk in and see so much as a broken cup, they can arrest and often they will. Okay. I just worked a case, um, mandatory arrest, two people, and, you know, then they dropped charges against her. So she would testify against him. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, except for. She was drunk, you know, was drunk out that night and they got into an argument over money and she decided she was going to leave and go to a friend's house and she was in her jammies. Now it was 24 degrees out and a foot of snow, Oof. right? And he says, no, don't go. And he grabbed her and she went berserk on him. Okay. This guy is facing, what, three years and all these bills and all this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, um, until I looked at it and, you know, I told the attorney, you need to talk about, you know, choice of evils here. Is it, oh, should I have just not touched her and let her walk out into the cold night at, you know, at midnight? Right? No. You know, self-defense. Right? I, he was defending her from herself but he was defending um court didn't care okay they were going to press it and i mean that is the system we live in right now or it, we used to now when you say the last year and a half now things have gotten really wacko because we had that where they were prosecuting everything then we had covid Okay. And there's a thing called a COVID kick, right? And that is when you get arrested, including violent felonies, they're not going to keep you in the jail. They're going to release you. So it's like you walk in, get your fingerprints taken, and you walk out. Okay. Do you, just, just to clarify that, I may know of a town somewhere that uh, currently has at least 11 murderers out on home arrest with, uh, with ankle bracelets Co for the COVID kick. This is my shocked face. I know, I know. Yeah, and, and yeah. Now, and the problem when you say last year and a half, I mean, people who were being taken off the street before are being back out on the street. And at the same time, we have this really weird legal system that is going on doing that. Now, do, I don't know if you heard about the uh, gang fight in Chicago. Right? Uh, the the where they said everybody's mutual combatants. Yeah, where they're shooting at each other. <laughs> you know, and arrested five people. I think one of them died, I, or one person yeah. died, right? And it's like, yeah, we're not going to prosecute because it's consensual. 70 rounds fired. Yeah. Uh, 70 rounds fired uh, in, a, in a, you know, a, a, a urban area, you know, yeah. like, like, like a neighborhood. Yeah. And, and they, they use the same 
like two guys get into a fist fight, willing to get in a fist fight, they use the they use the term mutual combatants when it came to using firearms, which is yes. absolutely insane. What? See, so yeah, I mean, you're looking at a situation where, I mean, you have that happening, and then you have the system, you know, like going after Rittenhouse. Right. And I mean, honestly, we can say a big, a good chunk of the reason why they're going after him is he used an evil assault rifle. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, this whole thing of them trying to over prosecute and ignoring, on the other hand, I mean, yeah. it, it, right. So, yeah, when you talk about in the last year and a half, it being nuts. Okay, I got to tell you, you're understating the problem. Yeah. You know. So, um, so what do you see when, when it finally gets to the point to where, and, and I, I, I don't like, I'm, I'm not big on hyperbole on this stuff, but I got to tell you, I mean, especially amongst a lot of the, the groups that I'm, I'm in, I've never seen people more prepared for the worst case scenario. Like people are truly talking in very sober terms. Yes. But, but what, if we start seeing not a written house type thing, but what about the, 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 the things that we saw before people, neighborhoods getting invaded, um, houses getting attacked, you know, cars getting surrounded and stuff like that, which has happened multiple times over, over the last, you know, year and a half. And, you know, literally Molotov cocktails being thrown and, and these and excused. And, and, and then the response back, it's as, as you said before, this is truly going to start affecting us now. These are not the walk-bys in the mall anymore where we can see the kid drilling the floor. This literally is going to affect you and your family and people for people who've never probably had to think about it are going to have to think about what are they going to do? How are they going to respond to this? And, you know, will they, will they know how to navigate those waters? You know, because violence is kind of foreign to most people. Okay. Um, first, let's talk about how a lot of people are going to handle this and that takes us back to the movie animal house remember kevin bacon rotc character during the riot remain calm all right. well <laughs> right. <Run over. laughs> okay. yep. um there is serious hardcore denial that this is happening Okay. Now, if it gets to the point where it is bad enough that they have to notice, what concerns me is the number of people who will look and given their current mindset, who will look towards the government and say, please bring in the jackbooted thug stormtroopers. Yeah. Right. And that is a legitimate concern. And yeah, it is not hyperbole to say that especially in light of you know the national guard that was present during the uh inauguration you know i i love the photo i have of here all these guys stand there with rifles saying finally we defeated fascism right and i know i we, we're not going to go politics but you know when you see that kind of firepower being used you know, that's concerning. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of people are just going to be victimized and, you know, moving into what's going to happen is they're going to believe that they're safe until they realize they aren't and they're going to freak. Right. Um, and I mean, that's a growing thing. It's like, you cannot live in a large urban area without realizing, without seeing firsthand that our solution to the homeless problem is a disaster. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and part, oh, by the way, tying this back to statistics, right? Watching how they like change the law that they're not gonna prosecute anything under a thousand dollars for theft. Yeah. But look, statistics say the crime is not going up. Yeah. Right. I, you know, you've got that. Um, 
then you're running into people who really would rather be left alone. I mean, life's hard enough just getting through. Right. Um, but they're not going to hesitate. And okay, I married into a ranching family, right? No. Which cultural shock. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened is when they decided to reintroduce the wolves into these environments, the ranchers kind of, no, no, because you're bringing predators back in, but you're not offering to pay for anything that they kill. Right. Right. And that turned into what is colloquially known as the three S's. Shoot, shovel, and shut up. Okay. Um, that, I, you know, a lot of the stuff that goes on um, or is when people push back, it's going to be ugly, but how many of them are going to keep their mouth shut about it? Exactly. Okay. And that's human nature. You know, that's the other thing we're talking, we go right back to human nature, meaning the people that want to be uh, left alone will will do so and try to still be left alone for that very reason. I mean, because they're going to shut up. They're just going to take care of business mm -hmm. and get back to it. And just, there's nothing to see here. Right. And I mean, that could be an issue now going a little further, you know, if people lose faith in the institutions and that is really happening. Okay. Um, what I'm kind of concerned about is people hiring their private goons. Okay. okay. Neighborhoods getting together, companies deciding. And I mean, um, you know, I have little birdies who tell me things. And there has been a shift in the mindset of certain corporations of we're not, you know, we're not telling people not to shoot anymore. We're actually, you know, hiring security and, you know, people to protect us who are very capable of doing major damage. Okay. And if given a choice between, you know, taking the damages that certain individuals will want to do or shoot, shovel, shut up, that's there too. Okay, so we're covering the spectrum here. And then quite frankly, and these guys scare the hell out of me. They are just people out there who are itching for things to go down. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh. And I mean, they, they, yeah, Civil War. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Not but, knowing what, you know, the, not knowing what they're talking about. No. You know, what, what they're really conceiving. That, and that to me is the scary, the, the scary part for me is not just looking at history is, you know, they all, they, they, they talked about somebody like a, a, a Trump and I'm mean, not, not from a political sense, but they tried to foist upon him what really can happen, you know, meaning if you continue down the path of reality, it's not going to be a Trump. It's going to be somebody who is going to promise law and order. We are going to waive all sorts of rights and we are going to welcome him in with open arms. And we are going to, again, give up a tremendous amount of rights to yes. an authoritarian person who can put things down and, and does it in a manner that, you know, makes everybody feel safe again. And Thank yet you. we wake up and we realize what we've lost. Okay, that's a great place for us to hold off. And now we'll get into the third part in our next video of my final uh, discussion with Mark. You know, we talked about everything you saw, you know, you now under, kind of understand how people are going to go towards this. What does history tell us? Uh, what's likely, things to, uh, you know, really be aware of, and uh, what's being manipulated. Uh, but again, that whole idea of having stakes in the game, what are the stakes, is, is a very important concept to keep, keep uh, mulling over. So listen, I appreciate uh, all the support. I just appreciate all your feedback on this. It's been great. Mark is one of the best when it comes to this, uh, you know, information. If you don't know who Mark McYoung is, you're missing out. Uh, he's got a wealth of information. And again, what you don't know can kill you is a great place to start. 
Also, if you want to start building your own self-protection program, go to timlarkin.com, give us your email, and we start you off with an absolutely free masterclass. Please subscribe to this channel, share this channel, let your friends know it exists. That's how we're growing. Believe me, Google's not helping us. All the best.